Hello class, this is Demetrius Wilson again with Principles of Management, Chapter 12. We're almost there, only 15 chapters, three more to go after this. Uh, we are now going to speak about managing groups and teams. We're going to talk about what the differences are between the two and uh, go into all of those nuances. Uh, <clears throat> our learning objectives are recognize and understand group dynamics and development, right? So there's always a certain group dynamic within each group uh, throughout all of the different companies uh, that we work for, that we see, that we hear about, that we buy things from, and development of the group, uh, how do groups actually develop. You want to understand the difference between groups and teams, understand how to organize effective teams because it takes some skill, it doesn't just happen overnight. Recognize and address common barriers to team effectiveness, what's stopping you guys from being effective, and build and maintain cohesive teams. Can we get people to uh, get along. They don't necessarily all have to uh, sit in a circle, hold hands, and sing kumbaya, but they should uh, be able to get along. As always, we have our planning, organizing, leading, and, or, and controlling uh, framework, and we see as we went from leadership to decision making, communication, and now we're at groups and teams. So what is a group? A uh, group is a collection of individuals who interact with each other to achieve common goals, right? We have a common goal. We shall work together to achieve that common goal. Groups and teams have become an essential component of an organization's success. Uh, being able to work in a group is a key uh, skill for managers and employees alike. If you're a manager, you're going to have to work in a group. If you're an employee, you're going to have to work, into, work in a group. There are few professions uh, now that that people just work by themselves and don't talk to anybody else but I will tell you that in most professions you will have to and be tasked with working in a group and working with others so learn to love people and embrace them there are different types of groups uh, so you have informal groups which are made up of two or more individuals who are associated with one another in ways not prescribed by the formal organization so if I smoke and you smoke and we always go out to smoke uh, at 9.15 with the smoker, smoker crew, right? Uh, that's an informal group. <clears throat> now, if you work for me or I work for you, that's a formal group. A uh, formal group uh, is made up of managers, subordinates, or both with close associations among group members that influence the behavior of individuals in the group. <clears throat> so these are stages of development and this is there's been so many things written on the different stages of development and uh, showing them like uh, I, I, it's one that is not PG-13 so I can't show it uh, but it's from um, remember the movie remember the Titans and they show how the group formed and they stormed and they norm and they uh, performed and stuff like that so it's a uh, it's very very popular uh, the stages of group development so first you have forming right you form the group storming things get a little hectic uh, maybe a couple uh, fights not physical fights but uh, you know verbal and mental fights uh, then norming right you get down to the norm and then you perform you're performing as a group and then finally adjourning um, a lot of people uh, so sad to say goodbye to their great working teams that they love to work with uh, so adjourning can be tough so these are stages of group development now I personally love uh, comic books and comic book heroes and everything so I just you know uh, was uh, I guess uh, uh, very happy to see that they put these in the slide so the five phases of a uh, stage of a group development model uh, can be seen in a number of well-known groups both real and imagined here uh, we apply the model of development seen in the 2012 blockbuster the Avengers so the forming stage <clears throat> The Avengers uh, formed when SHIELD, Strategic Homeland Intervention Enforcement and Logistics Division. Bet you didn't know what SHIELD stand for. Uh, uh, Agent Phil Coulson uh, brought together superheroes Iron Man, Thor, Captain America, Hulk, Black Widow, and Hawkeye. Then they went on to the storming phase, uh, where uh, storming occurs as the Avengers uh, members uh, <clears throat> begin to argue on how to best fight their enemy, the dreaded Loki. Uh, storming uh, also arises as several members express concern with Dr. Bruce Banner, uh, who can turn into the uncontrollable Hulk at a moment's notice. <clears throat> now we get to norming. When S.H.I.E.L.D.'s flying uh, aircraft carrier, the helicarrier, is attacked, the Avengers uh, begin to uh, search for norms as they fight a common uh, enemy. So, to find a common enemy, we need to search for some norms. Performing as the Avengers rally to protect uh, New York and defeat Loki, they realize uh, the team must work together to perform 
at the level necessary to defeat such a powerful foe. Uh, the Hulk plays a critical role in the defense of the city. And then adjoining, uh, as the film ends, S.H.I.E.L.D.'s uh, agent Nick Fury uh, <clears throat> notes that uh, the Avengers will return uh, when they are again when when they are again needed, the Avengers may not be ready to adjourn, uh, as one of the uh, film's uh, post-credit scenes uh, shows when the Avengers dine in silence at a local uh, swarma restaurant. Right, so they weren't ready to adjourn, but uh, they they got adjourned. <clears throat> now the punctuated equilibrium model is, is very good. Um, I know it's a lot of lines there, but you know just look at it like this: periods of stability. There are three different periods of stability. Right, right there. Then you go to a period of rapid change. Bam, company get, gets crazy. You make more money, but you have more sales, so you have more responsibilities. Then you have a period of, st of stability. It stays pretty level, and then bam, it comes back up. Uh, periods of uh, rapid change, and then again, uh, right here we have periods of stability. So uh, that's that's kind of reality. Some br groups move uh, very quickly at certain times and slowly at other times. So. Uh, the punctuated uh, equilibrium model is definitely a good one. Uh, cohesive groups. Groups in which uh, members are attached to each other and act as one unit, right? So acting as one unit is great, but, you know, the attached part, uh, not, not so much, uh, not so sure about that part just because, uh, you know, you want to be too, too attached. You have your collective identity. You share a moral bond. Um, you share a sense of purpose. You work together on a common task and establish a structured pattern of communication. <clears throat> so fundamental factors of group cohesion, similarity, stability, size, support, and satisfaction. All right. So uh, when you think about that and think about uh, group cohesion, all right, if things are similar and they're stable and the size and you get support and you're satisfied, then you're going to stay in the group, right? Let me do that. Accidentally clicked off to the wrong thing. Oh, I'm not sure. Oh, please. Oh, there we go. All right. A little technical difficulty. Uh, can a group have too much cohesion? You bet they can. Uh, internal pressure to conform may arise when some members modify their behavior to adhere to group norms, right? Remember we talked about groupthink? Uh, cohesive groups will often disapprove of members who dare to disagree. Groupthink is group pressure phenomenon that increases the risk of the group making uh, flawed decisions like uh, with the challenger. Uh, is some people, sh you know, they try to stick to their guns and say, hey, this is, is not the route that sh we should go. But they decided to go against that. <clears throat> so that's groupthink and groupthink is not a good thing. Effectiveness of groups, uh, I'll let you look on this uh, on your own, but this is you know pretty easy uh, to, to comprehend. Low group cohesion, low performance, low task uh, commitment, right? So you want to be you want to be over here, right? <clears throat> and get high group co cohesion and high group uh, commitment as well. Social lo loafing and collective efficacy, uh, two great great topics. Um, Social loafing refers to the tendency, tendency of individuals to put less effort in uh, when working in group contexts. Uh, others aren't pulling their weight. Why should I? Right? That's a common, natural question for a human. Collective eff efficacy refers to the group's perception of its ability to uh, successfully perform well. Uh, so uh, if you have that, that self-efficacy or collective efficacy from, from a group, you believe that you'll be able to uh, <clears throat> succeed and do whatever the task at hand is. Uh, and then uh, we can do this. Uh, this is a good group, right? So those are quotes. Too. And some of them don't like necessarily the cookie cutter ones, and you have to be kind of creative in finding out uh, how to relay your message. So discussion questions. Uh, how do the tactics related to group dynamics involve the managerial functions outlined by the POLC framework right so I'll leave those questions to you guys uh, very good questions think about them ponder them it will make your brain grow so we have our differences between groups and teams right so a lot of people say, oh it's a group oh it's a team well there is a difference right a uh, group is a collection of individuals uh, but different from teams in both scope and composition a team is a particular group of uh, a, co a cohesive coalition of people working together to achieve mutual goals. And then a team is a small number of people uh, with complementary skills who are committed to uh, common purpose, uh, performance goals, 
and uh, an approach uh, for which they are mutually accountable. Mr. Michael Phelps. So teams and the weakest link. So while Michael Phelps has been dubbed the world's greatest swimmer, he could not have achieved his record eight gold medals uh, within one Olympic Games and 12 gold medals in total without the combined efforts of his teammates in five relay events during the 2008 and 2012 Olympic Games. <clears throat> the purpose of assembling team. Well, don't just assemble a team just to assemble a team, right? Uh, you need to have a purpose. So accomplish larger, more complex goals <clears throat> uh, that would be po that would be possible for an individual working in long working alone. Uh, so it says accomplish more complex goals than what would be possible, right? Then I thought they had wrote it wrong. Uh, then what would be possible for an individual working alone? So we get together with the team because we can do more damage. We can do more good. And when I say damage, I say in a good way. We can do more good than what you can accomplish alone. Perform, uh, get results, and achieve victory in the workplace. And the best managers are those uh, who can get, who can gather together a group of individuals and mold them into an effective team. Key properties of a team, you have to have collaborative action, compensation based on shared outcomes, and a sacrifice uh, for, uh, for the common good. <clears throat> there are three major uh, classes of team tasks. You have production tasks, idea generation tasks, and problem solving tasks. Uh, production tasks uh, include actually uh, making something, uh, uh, constructing a building, right? So you want to, uh, it, it's a production, we're putting this into production. Uh, idea generation tasks deal with uh, creative tasks, brainstorming, right? So brainstorming, come up with great ideas. And problem solving tasks uh, include coming up with plans for uh, plans for actions and making decisions, right? Uh, so all three different, all three can be very applicable to you in the workplace. <clears throat> the three types of task interdependence, so pooled interdependence, sequential interdependence, and reciprocal interdependence, right? <clears throat> Those are the three different uh, uh, tasks, uh, three different types of task interdependence. So let's look at them in more detail. Let's go ahead and increase this because these are interesting. Take a little sports analogy. So pooled interdependence exists when team members work independently and simply combine their efforts to create the team's output. This type of interdependence is seen in football where each player uh, often has a unique assignment uh, and he is responsible uh, for during a specific play, right? So for that guy right there, I hope he's got a blocker coming around to take this guy out. Uh, so reciprocal interdependence uh, exists when individuals work together and ideas and project assignments are passed back and forth until the project is complete. This type of interdependence is seen in basketball where players must be constantly alert uh, to receive a pass, uh, rebound, or transition uh, between offense and defense. <clears throat> Let's go to the next page, but you know what? We have more. Sequential, oops, too far. We're going to talk about sequential interdependence. Uh, exists when one person's output becomes another person's input, right? Goes out for me, goes into you. Uh, the interdependence is common in baseball where the ball is fielded and then uh, relayed from player to player until it reaches its ultimate destination, hopefully. <clears throat> Let's shrink this back down. Uh -oh. Maybe not that that small, right? Anybody can't see that. Team role uh, typology. So everybody has a different role within the team. So you have a contractor, creator, contributor, completer, critic, a cooperator, communicator, a calibrator, console, and a coordinator, right? So everybody plays a different role, and uh, you should work to establish what your role is. And your role can change; it can vary. Uh, maybe uh, you weren't as big the, as a communicator uh, <clears throat> for the last uh, couple months within the team, but you can go ahead and you can change that, and you can go into this area of the pie as opposed to staying as the critic. Uh, these ten roles include task roles, uh, social roles, and boundary spanning roles. Right? So it could be spanning, could be doing other things. Uh, the types of teams. You have a task force, uh, which is a temporary. Well, we're going to go ahead and stop right there. We'll 
reconvene on that slide on uh, the second part of the lecture for chapter 12.